everybody. I'm here with David Wright. He is at our studio in Carson City, Nevada. Uh, thanks for being with us, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right. So we're going to talk about th this. This can go a lot of different ways, but we titled this How to Stay Healthy on the Weekends. And, um, you know, I don't usually work out on weekends. I, I work out five days a week, Monday through Friday. But what about your eating and maybe you go for walks on weekends. Maybe you throw some other things in there. So what are some of your strategies that you use and that you use with your clients so that you don't go all sideways on weekends? Yeah, Steve, this is a, a big one that I have pretty much all of my clients. Uh, we've, we've discussed some of this stuff. And um, one of the strategies that I like to use, you know, personally, obviously, I'm on a whole different journey than most people uh, in the population with my show coming up here soon. So, you know, every day is the same for me with my workout, cardio, all those types of things and my meal preps. But for my clients, you know, I like to really try to reframe it. Um, a lot of times people will come in with, you know, I'm going to eat great, you know, Monday through Friday. Um, you know, I'm going to go to the gym a couple of days a week or come train with me a couple of days a week and maybe come in on their own. But on the weekends, it's kind of a, a free day or free days um, on Saturday and Sunday. And what they mean by that is like maybe they don't work out, which is OK. Um you know, but they also kind of take that as an opportunity to, I'm going to go in kind of the opposite direction of the, the healthier eating that I'm, I'm trying to do throughout the week. I'm going to go and go out with friends and family, which is fine. Um, you know, but I'm going to, I'm going to completely bomb, you know, cheat meals as we call them. I like to call them more of treat meals because you're not cheating on anything. Um, you're, you're kind of just, you're giving yourself kind of a, a, a treat of a meal. But a lot of times, unless you're you know, prepping for a show or something like that, we take it to an extreme. And I can even say that for myself when I'm not competing. Um, I've done that. But I've learned over the years to treat Saturday and Sunday nutrition-wise as the same as every other day. And if you want to go you know, out with friends or family, you know, celebration, whatever the case might be, and have something that's not maybe the healthiest choice on that day, then go do that. Um, try not to think of it as something you can't do. Think of it as something that I can do. And, you know, I'm just not going to do on a regular basis. So I try to, you know, make it look like all seven days, there is no difference nutrition wise, stay on track all of those days. And then if you, again, want to have some other kind of a meal or something like that, then, then do that but do it once, not a whole cheat day, a treat meal um, to keep you on track because that's that's what gets a lot of people off track is either, you know, whether it's, you know, food specifically or even, you know, alcohol, different things like that that add those empty calories that are not going to help you towards, towards where you're going when you're here in the gym and you're eating healthy Monday through Friday and all of that progress. Sometimes, actually fairly frequently, that can kind of backslide you a little bit um, or greatly, depending on how, how much you kind of go to the other direction on the weekend. So it's really good to just think of it as like any other day, whether you exercise or not on the weekend is, is fine. Or if you don't exercise Monday and Tuesday, but you go to the gym on the weekend, whatever your schedule might be, always try to think of it as every day is the same in terms of what you're going to eat and plan for. So that way it's not, you know, kind of taking your progress back. Yeah. And like for, for me and my wife, you know, I I'll almost always take her out to dinner on a Friday nights and, but we don't eat junk. Yes. We're eating out at restaurants, but they're usually nicer restaurants where the food is a little higher quality. Um, and there's certain things that I don't eat at restaurants. You know, I don't eat pasta. I would love to eat pasta, but I don't, um, you know, every once in a while, depending on what I'm having, I might have a little mashed potatoes with my meal or something. And sometimes I do that at home too, but I keep my carbs, you know, under a hundred grams. Um, that's for me in my sixties, you know, I didn't do that 20 years ago. I didn't have to, and it probably wasn't healthy for me to do 20, 25 years ago. 
but you can still, you know, you don't have to completely fall off the wagon. You know, so we'll go out on Friday night and sometimes I'll have a couple beers or, or whatever, but that's not something that happens every day. It's something right. that happens on Friday night when I go out with my wife or maybe we are having, uh, you know, a special occasion or we're with friends or, uh, you know, we're out somewhere. Um, but then there's also things that you can put in in the weekend, like go for a walk, you know, um, do certain things. I don't I rarely lift weights on weekends, but I do have, you know, all kinds of stuff in my home. I can do pull ups. I can do bar dips. I can do all kinds of that stuff. Just fitness snack throughout the weekend. If I want to, you know, mm -hmm. do uh, hip hinges or, or whatever sit ups there's because I, I have equipment at home also. And it's nice just to walk by it. Oh, I'm going to do a few of these. So I'll do that sometimes, but it's not a planned workout that I do. Um, so it's important not to just completely fall off the wagon and, and lose sight of your health and eat bad things. You know, I, I don't eat desserts. Um, I'll have a beer, but I don't eat desserts. Um, I just don't, you know, if somebody that's with us, I might taste it, but uh, I don't, I don't really eat that stuff. And there are certain carbs that I don't eat. And there are certain fried foods that I don't eat. Even when we go out to dinner on weekends and uh, when we do, we know what these restaurants are cooking in. Um, and they know that we want our food cooked in butter or something healthy. So we're aware of that. Um, sometimes Mexican food, which is okay, but I, I don't eat Mexican food out every day. That might be a, a Friday thing, and they um, cook with lard. We go to restaurants, with Mexican restaurants, where we know they still cook with lard, which is much healthier than seed oils and other things that they could you could cook with. So um, is, is that a cheat meal? Yes, but it's not totally going sideways on the weekend where you're eating, you know, cake and you know, sometimes we'll even have pizza, but we usually go to the higher end pizza places where we can get a really good gluten free pizza that you can't even tell the difference. It's so good. And some pizza places are like that, you know, up at Lake Tahoe and so on. There's some great places that have gluten free pizza. And every once, once in a while, we'll do that. Like when we go on vacation, we have one night that's a pizza night, but we don't go crazy with it. Pizza is probably not something you should eat every night. And uh, it's not something for sure I should eat every night. So that's kind of how we do it. Yeah, and I, I would agree with you on, on all of those things. Because, yeah, a lot of times, and I will say myself included, I've been there before. Obviously, there's um, a learning, kind of a learning curve, and you get to kind of understand how, how different you can make it yourself. But... Um, you know, sometimes people will say, you know, gosh, I went out and to use your example, you know, I went out to dinner Friday night um, and, you know, I had, you know, whatever it was you ate. And then sometimes people go, well, you know, I, I maybe it wasn't the healthiest thing on the menu. And that's OK sometimes, too. But they'll say, well, I already kind of ate this. And so on Saturday, well, I'm going to go out to this other place and have this. And, and just it kind of continues because I already ruined it anyway, so I might as well enjoy it type of thing. And I and I tell clients, not all of them, because not all of them think that way, but I know that in the past that I had thought that exact same way. So I know how that, that feeling is in your head because you know what, you don't normally eat that stuff. You know, if you're on that healthier track, you know, you're you're pretty much getting your your meals in order and you're really trying to eat healthy. So if you kind of go off the rails even for that that cheat meal or treat meal, um a lot of times what's then going to happen is you're going to start thinking about and you're going to start craving some of those things that you haven't had in however long it's been. And so your body's going to, your brain and your body are going to fight you on that. Uh, number one, uh, to want to crave that more because they're like, ah, you know, these carbs, the fats, the chemicals that are in a lot of our food, your body's going to say, Hey, I want more of that. So then on the weekend you're going, well, I'm going to go eat this or well, I'm going to go eat this other thing. And before you know it, you know, 
not only the, the weight on the scale has changed, which of course is a tool, but you know, your clothes are fitting tighter. All these types of things happen and people go, wow, how'd I get here? So that's why I always say, you know what, you know, you need to, you know, again, moderation in terms of, yeah, I'm going to go out and eat something. Try not to make it the worst thing you could possibly have. That's for sure. If you can, but you know, don't feel guilty about it and don't think it's the, you know, because you did it once, or maybe you went out and had a big breakfast on Saturday morning. Well, you know, that's not my meal plan. So I'm just going to wreck it the rest of the day too. You don't realize how much that sets you back in terms of your progress, not only in the gym, but just overall health wise, because you've been doing, you know, a good job, you know, trying to get there, especially if you're just starting out on, you know, trying to get those meal plans under control, trying to cut cravings, those types of things. That's when it's really, really important to try to stay on the wagon. And even if you do go out somewhere, I'm not saying to restrict yourself to, sorry, friends, family, coworkers, whatnot, I can't go anywhere with you because I've got to eat the special food. No, but you've got to know, to your point, you say, you know, we go out to places, you know, we know what they cook in, we know what they're serving. We're going to look at the menu ahead of time. Like, look at what the selections are. Try to plan that so it's not so stressful when you get there and go, oh, you know what? I want this, you know, chicken Parmesan. When in fact, you're like, eh, if I had looked at this sooner, maybe I would have seen something else that I would like, maybe isn't so probably not good for you, so to speak. So there's a lot of different really easy methods to help you stay on track, even if you go out or, you know, go with family and friends someplace, which you should absolutely do um, because you don't want to restrict yourself because then it also kind of makes it a negative that you can't do the things that you want or you don't think you can, but you absolutely can and should but just plan it and, and help your brain stay at ease and it'll help you uh, through that process. Yeah. And certain things that like we never do even on weekends or whenever or ever is we don't eat fast food. You know, that's never a cheat where I'm going to drive through and get fast food that never, never, never happens. So like you said, we're eating at kind of higher end places. Even if we eat pizza, it's not a $10 pizza, you know, it's a, $40 pizza. Um, but the ingredients are always cleaner. And you said chicken Parmesan, you know, um, I, I can't eat a lot of carbs cause I watch my glucose and it'll knock it out of whack. If I eat too many carbs, two, three days in a row, I could do it once, but the chicken Parmesan, that's got a lot of sauce on it. That's probably not good. And it's got the pasta, which isn't good for someone that's my age. Now, if you're 20, pasta is probably fine as long as you're getting a healthy pasta. Um, but I also want to say, if you go to these higher end Italian restaurants, they're not using seed oils. They're cooking everything in olive oil, um, mm -hmm. you know, organic, um, olive oil is what they're cooking in. So they're not, they're not cooking in junk because the pride of these chefs won't let them cook with a seed oil. It has to be the best of the best olive oil, which is much healthier than any of these other oils that maybe some of the other restaurants cook in. So no fast food ever. That, that's one of our rules. We just don't do it ever. Um, not on weekends, not on a cheat meal. It just, we don't do it. And like I said, if, if you're at those kind of higher ends and things are expensive right now, it's hard to do that. It's hard, it's hard to eat like my wife and I eat because for most people, because I mean, just to get the highest quality ground beef, you know, grass fed, grass finished, you're looking at 12 bucks a pound. And eggs to get the best of the best eggs. I mean, we have our own chickens. A lot of you know that. But to go to the store and get the best of the best eggs, you're looking at seven or eight bucks for a dozen right. eggs. And uh, anything lower than that is not the quality that we like to eat. So, yeah, we're, we're maybe a little spoiled, but uh, it makes a difference in our health. So that's kind of our approach on weekends and at all times, you know, the different thing about weekends is we eat out. And so that's where we're cautious and know where we're going and so on. 
Yeah, and I, w- I would just add to that in terms of, you know, you made a great point in terms of, um, you know, things are very expensive. And, and I understand if people maybe, you know, don't go to the high end restaurant or don't go to, you know, somewhere that might have the best quality, you can still get a decent meal somewhere. But you have to understand, you know, even today with a lot of the menus, I think it might even be a requirement now, I'm not sure with the, the calories. Now, that's just a basic number. Uh, you know, that's that's on a menu with with the, whatever that meal is. So that's not going to tell you everything. That's not telling you what it's cooked in. That's not telling you what all the ingredients, you know, underlying ingredients are. But even if you look at something like that, because if you go to certain, you know, chain restaurants, sit down restaurants, even some that are here in Carson City or nationwide, some of those numbers would shock you if you really looked at them. And if you look further into them, that's why I say look ahead of time. And then you can see like on websites, their nutritional, actual nutritional facts. You know, sodium is huge, 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 huge in any of these restaurants, especially again, chain restaurants, because they want that same presentation, same taste, same everything at every location that they have. So in order to do that, you've got a packet full of preservatives and sodium and all this other stuff. So look at those ingredients. I mean, even if you just look on that basic menu and see some things, I don't know, 2,500 calories, that's one meal. So just imagine what's in that meal that makes it 2,500 calories. Because let's say it's a, again, I'll use chicken Parmesan because I happen to love chicken Parmesan. Well, depending on where it's from. Um, But I mean, it's noodles, chicken and sauce. So why is it 2,000, 2,200 calories? Well, think about it. There's all this cheese and all those other things. So just really look at, you know, even that can be kind of a red flag if you're going to somewhere and go, huh, you know, maybe I should look more into what's in that. What makes this, you know, super high calorie? Now, just because it's, you know, looks healthy. It's a, you know, favorite one of mine is, oh, a salad. I'm going to have a salad maybe with some grilled chicken. Sounds super healthy and like it's a great choice. The problem is, is what else is in there? What kind of dressing? How much are you putting on there? You know, all these different factors. So, you know, people will eat a salad every day and go, gosh, I'm not losing weight. I'm not losing body fat, whatever the case might be. And they're going, I'm eating salad and, you know, water. Well, your salad could be 1,500, 2,000 calories just by itself, depending on what you're putting on it. Eggs, bacon, all these different things that people throw in salads. So it's all just dependent, no matter where you go, to know what you're eating, to be informed. And it doesn't mean you have to be a restaurant expert, but it does mean you need to be invested in your health in terms of what you're putting in your body if you want to reach those goals and stay healthy whatever day of the week it is. So I think that's a good plan, um, you know, Sunday through Saturday. Um, doesn't matter what day it is, just really be aware and just make sure you know what you're putting in your body. Yeah. And, you know, you, you, you made kind of a good point there. There's always a better choice and a worse choice, no matter where you go. I don't care oh, yeah. if you're eating fast food. There's something on the menu that's better than something else. So absolutely know what those things are, you know, and no matter where you go, try to choose the better choices. Just like when you're you know, buying food at the grocery store. There's always better choices and there's always worse choices. If you can afford to eat organic uh, chicken, great. If you can afford to eat that. Um, but not if not, you, you just want to do the best that you can. And at, at these restaurants, no matter if it's a nicer restaurant or fast food, there's always going to be a better choice. So learn what those better choices are. And last thing I would say is um, when you're in a calorie deficit, a lot of times when we go out and I know I'm going to go eat maybe 2,000 or 2,500 calories in a meal just for dinner and I'm going to enjoy myself even though it's healthy, I can skip breakfast and skip lunch. I can take amino acids in the morning. I can take amino acids in the afternoon and and get my amino acids in, essential amino acids, and then go have that meal. Now, again, everyone's different. I couldn't get away with that. With what you're doing, you can't get away with that, eating one meal a day. I couldn't get away with that. 30 years ago, that wouldn't have been good for my health. I needed four or five meals a day to maximize my health. Now I can maximize my health with one meal a day 
and some supplements that are going to keep my amino acid pool up. So I'll do that. But where I was going with that is I believe when you're in a calorie deficit, you let your body be on the offense. It's not getting clogged up. It's not getting bogged down. You're not, your liver's not getting bogged down. Oh, let me get rid of all this stuff because you're in a calorie deficit. So your body can be on the offensive and uh, get rid of uh, the poisons or whatever you want to call it, the uh, foods that are more unhealthy. Your body can go on offense because it's not bogged down by, you know, a calorie surplus. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. So, David, if uh, people want to see what you're doing on social media, how do they follow you? So they can follow me on my personal Instagram page at David Wright underscore fitness for my you know fitness journey that I've been on, my show prep that I'm currently on right now through August 10th. Um, and then I also have my personal training page at Wright Fitness Training. All right. Thanks for being with us, David. Thanks, Steve.